So welcome to Boxing Media Hub, sponsored by Falcon Contracting and BoxBets.co.uk. Your hair's fine, mate. Your hair's fine. <laughs> um, we, <laughs> I've got one of the boys who started off in a pro game, now going for BKB, and a um, documentary on the way as well. He's doing everything. We've got yeah. G- George Hillyard. How you doing, George? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for having me on. Honestly, thanks for coming on, mate. Thanks for sparing your time, especially with a West Ham game on. <laughs> We're too painful, new up. Mate. Painful. painful. I'm happy. I'm, um, no, no, I'm happy at the moment. We're too new up. Right. You're all right then. You're all right. Yeah. Hopefully it'll be all right by the end of these. Um, but yeah, thanks for coming on, George. Um, no, I appreciate it. It's been an exciting journey so far. Um, yes, mate, we yes. cast our minds back. Um, 20 fights, 13 wins, one draw, seven knockouts, if you can remember. Um, June 2005, your yeah. debut. Yeah. Crazy, mate. How many years ago is that? Crazy. Christ. Well, 19 years now. So, yeah, it's been, it's, it was mad. That that was when I turned pro. Obviously, just prior to that, I missed out on the 2004 Olympics. Yeah. I, I got beaten in the qualifiers. And then I was like, I'm not waiting around for the next one. Um, so I just turned I turned pro with, with uh, Barry Earns, match room sport. Yeah. And um, they put me on with Jaren Harvey from Wales. It was his 23rd fight. And uh, they went, listen, he went, this geezer's is a tough fellow. He, he'll take you to rounds. He went, he'll give you a good workout. And um, he come rushing at me and I just threw this right hand. 42 seconds. I was six seconds off of breaking Mike Tyson's record <laughs> for the fastest ever knockout in the pro debut. Yeah, I knocked him out in 42 seconds. It was mad how, and then my life just went, it went mental at that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I obviously ended up signing a £15 million contract with Matchroom Sport. And it was just, um, it was mental. Yeah, just mental. But as quick as I had it, as I said, as quick as I had it, I lost everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, when I say I lost everything, I, I, I lost everything that, I, everything that I had before. I lost that as well. It was... Right, uh, he's mad. Did but, you ask? Did you ask for the fifteen million up front? <laughs> oh, mate, it would have been nice. It? it was over, it was over a five-year, uh, five-year deal contract. Yeah, like, yeah. If I went to the Olympics and won the Olympics, uh, they would have given me a signing on fee, like they would they do with all the, the Olympians. Yeah. But obviously, I never went. I I decided to, after getting beaten in the qualifiers, just turn pro. And. Uh, all I was then was just a big ticket seller. So, uh, yeah, I had that the 5th of June, 2005, live on Sky Sports at uh, Gorsbrook Leisure Centre in Dagnum. Yeah, yeah. Um, Nicky Cook was the main event then. Good old Nicky. Yeah, against Dazzo Williams for the British Commonwealth and European title. And, um, yeah, and I just, I sold I sold it out. Like, it's not, I like it's only, what, 13 or 100 people, but... I sold majority of that out, me and Nicky Cook. So uh, what a night! Well, I think that's what the, I think that's the big thing these days. I think people really overlook it, but we we forget that you know you guys have got to sell the tickets. You know, people people automatically think you know you made it as a pro. The tickets get sold. People turn up to the events. It's all good. You get paid a fair whack. It's you know all goes well from there. It's not. Yeah. It's a graft. Yeah. You've got to, you've got to work hard at it. And T- totally you know, mate. well said. The thing is, we as see well, it now, don't we? With like yeah. um, Nathan Heaney, prime example, great yeah. ticket set, uh, ticket seller. Um, you know, there's a lot of people. The Rumford Bull, yeah. um, oh, massive mate. ticket seller. But yeah, there's, I thought I, I thought I was a ticket seller. Uh, he, he, his dad, though, like, but his dad's like my dad. That, uh, I say my dad was. My yeah. dad sold all the tickets for me, but. Um, yeah, mate, he's mad. He does thousands. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And that's what's going to get him far, though. He, yeah, you know, probably. went over to the States, didn't he? The, uh, you know, not so long ago in Vegas, and he took everyone with him. So. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, in Vegas, like not just Vegas, America, it ain't about you selling tickets. But boxers don't have to sell them because yeah, yeah. box is so big out there that it sells itself. Yeah, yeah. But in the UK, it's not like that. Like, it's more like, oh, get your mates to come and, and promoters here, they don't give a shit how good you are. How many tickets can you sell? 
Yeah, yeah. Right. Do the when job Barry, for us. Do the job for us. Yeah, exactly that. It, can, yeah, how yeah. many bums can you put on seat and seats? I mean, yeah. and that's uh, and that's 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 it. But that clearly yeah. could you are, mate. And it's um, like you you'll see you'll see a lot of things in my documentary. Uh, oh, honestly, mate, I'm looking forward to it, and we'll talk about your tooth in a minute. But you know, um, the jammer said the Bosch father, the hundred percent, Big John. <laughs> he does it, doesn't he? Big John. Um, Big John. Um, he's put, hey guys, I've got to ask which defeat hurt more? Blimey, he's gone straight in the deep end. The loss to Prince Aaron in a boxing ring or um, Lanel Levici loss in BKB? And which would rather you have a rematch given a chance? Um, do you know what? Both of them are really nice fellas as well. Um, the, the loss to Prince Aaron, um, it didn't affect me because it was a free rounder. It was just not a gimmick, but it's if it was a 10 round fight, I'll beat him all day long. But over yeah, yeah. three rounds, I was never going to beat him. Like in the first round, I hit him with a crunching right hand. That that punch lost me the fight. Yeah. Because at six foot four, and I'm only five foot nine, I ended up being on the end of a jab for the jab and hit, jab, run, jab and run. And um, and that's and um in three rounds that's <laughs> hey, yeah and then he done the right thing beat me fair and square yeah yeah and the thing is you if you've got that in your arsenal you're going to use it in you oh, not going to totally you know I'm saying that but that was like my last fight when I when I boxed Da Vinci um I've been seeing some of the comments on YouTube they're like how did that geezer thought he won it like boxing's about hitting. Right. The only thing is, he was coming forward every time, and the more crunching shots, like the big, the big shots, were coming from him. After yeah. I got that cut, all I could do then was, right, you're standing on the end of my jab. So it was like jab and hit, jab and hit, because the cut was so bad, I couldn't keep taking punishment on it. I couldn't stand there with him because he was a lot shorter than me. So I was just jabbing and hitting and jabbing and moving, and his face was a, apart from my cut. His face was well, it's this side, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> come on, George. Come on, George. Uh, yeah, but apart from the fact uh, that I was just hitting him with a jab, but it was but people just see aggression, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they don't, if you know boxing, like amount of messages I've had, I could put all these messages on social media, but then it'd be like playing. Everyone was like, mainly American, my American friends were like, how did they have him winning that fight? Like, but America is they don't care about all that aggression and all that. It's about hitting and not getting hit. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean? So yeah, so but listen, we live and learn and we, we crack on and we're going again. And yeah, yeah, again both no. both of them are great, great uh but sorry, let me get to that point. What you asked. <laughs> Who was the, the, the We're getting there, Jam. Hang on, mate. Yeah, We're yeah. getting there. <laughs> the, the, the hardest one was against Lavinci because I actually genuinely thought I won it. Like, well, I did win it. So but um, yeah, I think they were listening to the commentators on there a bit as well. Um, but listen, we can't take nothing away from Da Vinci or, or none of them fighters. Anyone, box is it is what it is. I'm yeah, not exactly. going to moan about. I'm not going to moan about it. We just crack on and we go again. Yeah, no, hundred percent. And while you talk about America, obviously you had a bit of a dream, really, didn't you, going over to America and working with, you know, Mayweather? Yeah, yeah, it was mad. It was mad. Um, yeah, and it was God. You probably seen the film on on Netflix called Bitcoin, and um, yeah, I was a part of all that. And they tried to say it was me in the end that was conning everyone. It was horrific and horrible. And but once again, it, it, it it's kind of helping me sell my documentary, uh, yeah, yeah. and hopefully have my my documentary turn into a real life film with my autobiography coming out. Make it a bit better than what. Because remember this, in the boxing world, everyone knows who I am. Walking down the street, if I was walking down the road with Anthony Joshua or, and me, no, out of 100 people, probably about 10 people max would know who I am, where 100 people would know who Anthony Joshua is. So yeah, that's yeah. me moving to the America with the Mayweather's. It was helping trying to sell things. And that's why Netflix are interested in the documentary and ITV and then the autobiographies. Because the Mayweather name kind of sells it a bit more than what my my name does. 
Yeah, yeah. But you've got that's that's what you got to do, mate. You've yeah, you've no, yeah, yeah, man. But also thought... you get you get the Joe Joe blogs and all like, oh, you're trying to live off everyone else's name, and you're like, what world are you living in? I ain't living off no one's name. I'm just a kid. I was a fat kid from the East End, by the way, and I'm I'm just happy chasing a dream. Yeah, I ain't here hurting no one. I ain't, and I ain't trying to get a name off no one else. But right? I can look after myself, and I think most people know that. So I'm just I'm just here trying to chase a dream, and um, and I'll get there. And the thing is, if he, if if you were given that opportunity, you know, you said that to most people. If you were given the opportunity to have a documentary, get your book out, and all the rest of it, you jump at it because. Oh. You know, if that's if that's a chance to put something on the table and and have something to remember you by, I think you know you you're putting yourself in history there, aren't you? Totally, so, mate. Totally, yeah, totally. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Why not, and mate? He, but I, I remember because when Barry Barry Earn said to me, like, I'm like, God, I went all this bad publicity we're getting, and he was like, Why are you worried about it? He went, what are they doing? I went, What do you mean? He went, They're talking about you, yeah. I went. Yeah, That's but it. not in the right way. He said, George, he went, if they ain't talking about you in the good way, all right, yeah. or they ain't talking about you in a bad way, he went, they're the two things you want them talking to you about. Yeah, then you're not relevant. He went, because if they're not talking about you, that's when there's a problem. Yeah, yeah. And he's going to know that more than anyone. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Everyone's got their opinion on, um, on, on Floyd Mayweather, you know, yeah. senior but, and junior. And, yeah, and listen, but that they they are sorry I keep interrupting you. No, of but, course not. No, they but they're they're salesmen. They they sell things. They're the best. Like they they sell things. Like that, listen, you they they the way they sell things, right? And their selves. That's why they call the money team. Yeah. And and once again, when I was out there as well. Like, they were like, why are you worried about what people say? He went, as soon as you start worrying about what people are saying about you, he went, that's when you're going to go wrong. He yeah, went, yeah. because you're never, ever going to please anyone. Yeah, he went, you might get out of 100 people. It's got to be water, isn't it? Get... Water off a duck's back. That, that's it's, exactly that. That's it. You know, Tyson Fury is a, an up-to-date example, isn't he? He's, he's the guy that... He's jumped on board. He's got the energy drink out. He's got this out. He's got that out. And and he's done it himself. You know, yeah, yeah, totally. don't get me wrong. He don't like as much criticism, but yeah, listen, none of us do, but yeah, there's criticism and there's being constructive, isn't there? You, you, people yeah. have to be, yeah, yeah. well, well fair, don't they? Yeah, have yeah. to be fair. But, but it's, it's when you're getting people like, oh, I can, like, that don't know what they're, Never had, never had a fight in their, their life. And I'm not saying that's a bad a bad thing. But then they, they feel like they've got an opinion on what I'm doing. Like the amount of times you get, well, George, you're 39 years of age now. Why don't you just call it a day? Retire. And you're like, I'm not silly, right? But I've got something to prove. And I want I want to I want to chase this dream and and put the nail in the coffin and, and finish it. So I, yeah. as I keep saying, I don't want to be that man in a park bench in 20 years' time, Sam, I could have been. Yeah. You know what I mean? The could have been will make me jealous of my own kids. Because when I start seeing them be successful, I'm like, oh, yeah, I could have done that. I could have done that. Do you know? And I don't want to live like that. Yeah, yeah. So, it, well, like yeah. we said, didn't we, before we came on, we said you only live once. You, exactly. you give everything your best shot and um, be as kind and, and, and respectful it. to one another. Exactly. exactly so yeah. So you can do, but yeah. your pro career, I'm going to reel off these names. These are probably going to be a blast from the past for you. Yeah, mate. But um, Gorman, uh, Mazurek, Harrison, Healy, Scriven, Wakefield, Noble. Um, is it Goody or Good? Good uh, Goody. Goody. Yeah. Um, Gray. Very good. Um, mate, I ain't even going to try and say that last name, but. Do you know what I mean? The <laughs> the obs so, of of Yanni Yanni Cobbs with the best. Yeah, yeah. So and that's the thing. No, no, no one can take that. Say, yeah, you know what I mean, it was just yeah, it was just like and no. As I said, even in my pro debut against like 
um, Gorman, uh, uh, Harrison, uh, Gerald Harvey, sorry. And um, no one expected me to do what I did there against a seasoned 21 pro fighter, a man, and I was just a boy. You know what I mean? And all of yeah. a sudden, everyone just opened their eyes and was like, sorry to swear, who the fuck is this kid? And then obviously they went, right, we're going to put you in in Scotland against James Gorman from Ireland. And um, they went, this is a, he went, this Irish man is a tough man. He went, he never been stopped. He went, you won't like, he went, he'll give you the rounds. Mate, and I walked out there and blew him out in one minute, 13 seconds. Then What's went, the oh, feeling I... you get from that, George? Because you obviously, like you're going in, you've pretty much been written off. You, you've you've been told that, you know, this is the season guy, this is the person, he's going to give you a hard time, you know, and yet you, you know go what? in and do the job. Yeah, oh. but do you know what, like, these state, like the promoters, like especially Barry, he was brilliant with me, and and, and um, Gilman, who in Scotland, um, oh, what's his second name now? His second name, Gilman. Uh, you know, Gilman, the, the Scottish promoter, he yeah, yeah. partners with Matchroom. But they both sat me down, like they both spoke to me and said, listen, you're going to, because you're going to become successful, I mean, you're going to have more hate than you are positive. Yeah? I mean, it doesn't matter how much of a big ticket seller you are and you think yeah. everyone loves you because you're, you've sold 2,000 tickets. He said, then 2,000 tickets and then there'll be 20,000 on social media saying he's a bum, he's shit, he's this, he's that. He went, please ignore it. He said, because we need that. Like, it was a wake, it was, a, it was such a wake up call, and I had to grow up so quick. Yeah. Like, because, yeah, like, as, as I said, if I was in a room with 100 people, I'd want them all to like me. And if one said, oh, yeah, I think he's a prick, I'll forget the 99 and concentrate on the one. Yes, be like, yeah. well, I like me, mate. Like, but <laughs> it comes with age. As you get older, you're like, you realize. Yeah, you do. You realise. Like, I want to please everyone. Exactly. Right. But even in my work life, work life, just day to day life, I'm like, and I can't be asked with it no more. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, well, my my wife's jumped in to cheer you up, mate. She's put, I love the fact he talks common. I can almost hear him saying, get up those apples and pears. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry, mate. Oh, <laughs> you know I mean? But that's my wife, Rachel. That's what yeah. she's like. Hello, Rachel. No, you, no, you, get, a, you get a taste of what I live with. Yeah, um, yeah. Don't, I'll get, I'll get it in the ear as well. <laughs> yeah. But um, honestly, moved on from there. So last pro fight was March 2016. Um, we obviously then had the gap. We had the time of, you know, thinking about work it well you were working anyway you went into working and all yeah. that sort of thing and then we hit bkb debut december well, 2022 well, in, that, in that six between that time in, in i moved to america obviously with the major yeah yeah and everything that's was like going, six year wasn't it six year gap yeah no it wasn't that's because because of the because of covid and everything it just makes it look so much bigger than what it was yeah yeah but it was because of covid that when we moved to Vegas with the Mayweather's, it was like I was going to fight Conor McGregor. It was going to all this stuff was going to happen. First of all, they wanted me to go and fight in Mexico, so that was like my because I've been out the uh, I've been out the ring for three years. I was like, we'll get you a warm up in in Mexico against a tough, durable uh, opponent, and then we will get you another fight lined up. And then COVID hit, and it was just like, as I That's said. It. I mean, I, it's mad. And Americans mm. don't mess about. Like, I had a sports visa and they went, we don't give a shit. Sorry to swear on your program. Like, right. um, yeah, we don't give a monkeys. Um, is, your, is, is your flights piss off home? And I, I've got my missus, kids, got, we're all there. And we're like looking at each other like, and then all the money that we had from our investors and that Bitcoin, it all just stopped there and then. Next minute, I'm like, where's my money? I'm like, we had to ring my partner's missus. Uh, my missus is brother. Yeah, be careful. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. You've got to do this in a correct way. Yeah, yeah. I, had to, I had to ring him, like say, Lee, 
can you lend us the money to, and I'll pay you it when we get back. Like, can, can you lend us the money to, and he's like, yeah, no stress. Like, if it weren't for him, we, we would have been stuck out of still. Mad. It's just a mad, mad, mad journey, mate. It's just, like, as much as people see the good side of things, like the amazing bits that happening, but there's also, there was some shit bitch, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, no, hundred percent, and I think that's the thing. People don't don't see the uh, that they they want to see the spotlights and the yeah. you know the glitter and all the nice stuff, and you know you yeah. find out as I say, you find out who your mates are as well. Yeah, in no, those you moments. know what? It's it's weird as well. Like, I've, what I found hard is you know when you come out and said, "Look, I've just I've I've been taken for a lot of money here by an, uh, the, my million pounds of contract has been ripped up in front of me and when like when i wasn't looking for sympathy it's weird to explain what i was when i put it out there over on social media and then obviously i've got the documentary coming out and then i said that i was suffering with a bit of depression it was it was hot mate it was like like it was hard but like, <laughs> i'm laughing right now because i really want to scream West Ham have just scored. <laughs> I do apologise. So uh, this is going to be a great interview for you. Know. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be great highlights for you, mate. Don't yes. worry. Get in there. Right. Uh, so, yeah, it's crack on. Uh, yeah, so it was just it was so hard, mate. And then when I come out, I had depression. It was like everyone went, what? Right. All right, mate, you go, you go and sit over there. It was like I had the lurgies. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was just weird. I thought, oh, and then you get the odd one. Obviously, I had some loyal people around me, like family family members that stuck by me. But it was like, wow. And then people were like, why, why are you saying you've got depression? Why are you trying? Like, and this is way before Tyson Fury come out of it. And yeah, yeah. when I come out of it, I was with Tony Sims at the time. We was boxing on the same show as Tyson Fury. I said to Tony, I went, I'm I'm suffering with depression, mate. I went, I feel it. We was out in we was out in France training. Me, Darren Barker, the yeah, and Danny Urban, uh, Dave Stewart, we was out there training for our, our fight at your call. And uh when I come back, I said it, he went, nah, nah, you ain't going, mate. Think about you, George, you can look after yourself. And I went, Yeah, 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 yeah. Just yeah. it off like that. And um then walked into the room, cried my eyes out. I've got no kids around me, no missus around me, I've got no one. Bawled my eyes out, and then bang, everyone's banging on the door, saying, hey, dinner's ready now, we, we got, and we're going to go to the gym next, like we've got the next session. And I'm like, yeah, 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 I'm coming now, wipe, wash my face, wipe that, walk out like if it was normal. Fucking mad. Yeah, yeah. Mad. As I say, it's not all sunshine and rainbows, is it? And, no, and people no. just see the outside. And yeah. they think, like to say, George can handle himself. You know, he's a bloke. He's a geezer. He can do this. He can do that. But you know, if you're if you're struggling inside, especially as a man, you know, I think especially yeah. recently it's come to the forefront, and it, yeah. you know, yeah. um, you know, we suffer, but we yeah. try to hold that 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 man look that we think we should have when it, actually it's I'm okay. Up, yeah, exactly. Listen, w women are mentally stronger than us men right and i know we, we might be physically stronger right but i won't know what to do without my missus that's yeah. not a lie yeah. I'm, I'm just telling you the truth same here mate she, she she does everything as i said the only thing i've got to do is write my own ass <laughs> yeah. and i struggle with that <laughs> she'll be grateful for that mate yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> yeah, at the moment, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah so but yeah, it's, look, but and we all suffer with it. Look, we all suffer with it. I don't when you and look at when you look at it, 99.6 percent that's how high it is. People have it, but brush it under the carpet. Yeah, it might not yeah. be, it might not be, it might not be, they might not suffer it big, right? But after the, it's there. Under the carpet yeah, it's yeah, there, yeah. Of yeah well as i say i i genuinely can't wait mate for your documentary um so, i genuinely can't mate because um you're a character george you've Cheers, you've you've been through 
you've been through everything and uh, your ups and downs, your highs and lows. And as you say, the thing that you've come out with is an amazing wife and kids. And, and mate, that, and that's, that that's comes what, better that's, than anything. Yeah, totally that, mate. And what it is as well is I want to, I want to show my kids it's more than anything that if you want something in life, don't ever give up. Don't matter what yeah. people say, go out and, as long as you're not hurting no one, go out and chase it. Yeah. I mean, I'm lucky I've got a lovely wife to be that is so supportive. The kids are supportive. I mean, and they suffer the most. Yeah. Yeah. And it's true. They suffer the most. They suffer more than what I do. Even though I'm putting my body through the, the hell, <laughs> but they su- they're, they're suffering more than me, believe me. Yeah. Yeah. And well, I'll, all I'll say is there, I'll tell you now, George, they'll be grateful and blessed to have a dad like you. That's oh, willing you, to you. stick it on the line and oh, and do it that. for for them. That that goes a lot more than a lot of people, you know. Yeah, it's okay, mate. I can get about to cry, you wanker. Oh, don't you start. <laughs> no, then, like, thank you. Then I will. Yeah. Well, a karate mess on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but honestly, George, is there any idea of when we're going to be looking at seeing this documentary? We're trying to get the documentary and. We were speaking about this today with uh, Mark Forrest and who's the producer of everything. Uh, for they want to do everything, try and get everything out by Christmas. Okay. Personally, for me, I reckon that's going to be a bit of a a struggle because trying to get my name out in that amount of time and do a biography as well. It's, it's a, I think it's just a bit, but hopefully they know what they're doing. George, if anyone can do it, if anyone can blag it, mate, come on. Yeah, yeah, I like, I like to think I can, I can blag this one, but uh, yeah, I don't. But you're not blagging it. You've lived no, it, no, exactly. and people I'm deserve to hear it. Exactly. Hello. Yeah, I just want. Yeah, I just. And what it is, it's not just about my kids. I want it to be for anyone out there that you know, like if you want sank in life, go out and get it. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry yeah. about because there's so there's so many no sirs out there that just go out and get listen. Whatever you if you want, if, look, you want to be the best painter and decorator, the best in whatever scaffolder, best or whatever. Go out and get it, go out and do it. Don't let no one say that you can't do it. You know what I mean? And yeah. Because there's there's so many people that you know what I mean, and, and half of them are jealous. I this mean, that's, it, that's, and that's why now, mate, I'm half the time I keep myself to myself because yeah, yeah it's because everyone's like, oh, look, talking about boxing all the time. You're like, oh, god, here we go. I mean, at the time, I ain't even me talking about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? So, yeah, but you have to, listen, just chase, ch- just chase out the, just keep chasing. Can I eat something spicy? you got a straight face now. You got, everyone wants to see you. Quick, say hello. Quick, quick say hello, say hello. <laughs> <laughs> but, of course you can. Go and eat something spicy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, um, no, yeah, you're a, you're a top lad, George. And as I say, if you put your message out there and you're honest and natural, which you are, um, people are going to listen because yeah. you've, you've been there, done it. That's it, mate. You, you know, you, I, I can't wait to see it. And as I say, you've you've been there, you've grafted, you've had a cracking boxing career, you're having a, a cracking BKB career, you've you've been to the bottom, you're coming back to the top. Um, I've been with I'm, the I'm pretty sure, right? I don't know. If I had, you might correct me on this, but I'm pretty sure I'm the only boxer in the world that's been from amateur. I just missed out on the Olympic team to professional, yeah, to the unlicensed, and then to bare knuckle. I'm sure I'm the only boxer. That's that quite a shout, George. Yeah, that's I'm quite a shout. Sure. Yeah, that is. Yeah. So, please, if you can find that out for me, and um, yeah, but please do. Well, do you know what? We'll go with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, not dread, yeah. just stick it in the title um, <laughs> but honestly George thank you very much for your time mate you're very welcome mate um, love to the family as well stay in touch won't you mate and, um, try and yeah. make the 4th of May someone said to me on here it's nice to see Ray Winston as a guest mate <laughs> <laughs> and quickly George tell him, how you, tell him how you did your tooth oh yeah <laughs> my nice teeth so uh, I was helping a young young kid out, and um, he, 
I took him on the pads, and as I said, I, I said, hit the pad, put the pad up. He missed the pad and hit me straight in the tooth. And, um, yeah, and um, yeah, I've got a nice, nice builds of pain now. What was he, though? But, Seven foot five, 18 stone. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it was, yeah, he was, he was, no, 21 stone. Yeah. I mean, how how was he really? Three. How was he really? 16. And um, six foot about, three? About nine stone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, we love that. George, on that note, I'll let you watch West Ham. Talk have some time with your kids. Man. And do you know what? Stay in touch, mate. And I wish you all the best, George. You're a top bloke. Talk, you deserve Thank it. You, let's, let's do another interview soon as well. We will, mate. Talk, when you're, when you're on it, mate. You take care. Cheers, mate. Talk, man. Have a good See you, mate. See you, mate.